Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I will show you how to play PlayStation 1 games on your Android device. Before we get started, let's take a look at the controller history. So, in 1994 they released the controller with no analog sticks or rumble feature. This was later added in 1997 with the analog button to enable the sticks. Also, on the left we got the without analog sticks and on the right with. You can see that the right two and left two buttons were a lot bigger on the 1997 version. The PlayStation 2 was no big difference, just a little colors added to the controller, like this ocean blue. Also you can see the, the right two and left two buttons were a little bigger, but no big difference. On the PlayStation 3 controller released in 2006 we have the 6 axis, which actually did not have any rumble feature but was wireless through Bluetooth. It actually had pressure sensitive buttons on the left two and right two. The DualShock actually added the rumble feature later. The 6 axis means on both that it can be tilted with motion sensors like on flight games that can be played by tilting the controller to steer. The PlayStation 4 controller was redesigned but it actually kept the features adding the touchpad. So let's get on our video and show you how to play the PlayStation 1 games on your Android device. So the first thing you want to do is oh, download the APK given in the description. Okay, so hit there up. And now in the menu you want to hit on download. Now you will see that the file will get downloaded onto your Android device. Hit it. Open up the file and now you want to tap install. If you see any security things, just click on settings and allow unknown sources. I'm telling you this is a trusted source, is no virus, tested it. Hit on done. You can one hit home and now you want to go on the internet browser and download some games. I actually have on my tablet the Gran Turismo 1 and Gran Turismo 2. But today we're gonna play also some Crash Bandicoot because this is the smallest one from the three games. I'm gonna put the link to this game into the description. Meanwhile it's downloading you need an app. So go on the Play Store and you wanna download RAR because the file is a 7-zip and we got it extracted. This is a very small app, it's about 4 megas and it's gonna be very useful in any archives. So meanwhile this is downloading as you can see. I'm just gonna pause the video and be right back. This should not take so much. Okay, so the download has completed. So now I'm going to tap on the file, tap on RAR, and you will see two files, a bin file and a CUE file. What you need to do now is just um, go ahead and tick them, both of them. And now what you need to do is to tap the extract button. Now on the extraction options you can just set another path. Mine is by default on the external SD card. But since it requires some access I'm gonna click on cancel and extract them in the device storage. You can later move them so you don't get complicated with um, getting all the permissions done and all of the errors. The same you can do with the memory cards that I'm gonna show you later in the video on how to set everything up because the PlayStation 1 actually used 128 kilobytes cards to save your game progress like the PlayStation 2 did but those ones were 8 megabytes also on the PS1 there were some 1 megabyte versions for the cards if you wanted and you had about 15 blocks of saves for games so you can save your progress so you didn't have the cloud feature to log in download the save so if you're going to a friend which has PS1 back in 1995 and you wanted to play the game uh, and continue it you just inserted the card which was a pretty cool thing back then because you didn't have to log in download and then log out 
with your account into the PlayStation to download your cloud save data. So that was uh, pretty cool because uh, you just got your card which was actually smaller than a cell phone and you just put it in your pocket, go to your friend and maybe get your controller if he didn't have to and just play the game. So let's just wait for the Crash Bandicoot to extract. Again on my tablet I'm playing also some Gran Turismo 1 and Gran Turismo 2, they're pretty cool games. You can find them on Emmy Paradise, the Emulator Paradise. So Okay, so now being done, uh here you will see an ad. I'm gonna skip it. I don't need any apps. Now, what we need to do is actually open up the app, the EPSXE, hit OK over there. And now actually I'm gonna turn the phone onto landscape mode. Okay, so now with the phone turned on landscape mode, I'm gonna click on preferences, what you wanna do, and now down there you'll see controllers and other preferences. So um I'm just going to go back to EPSXE and turn it. And here on the memory card file, you'll have it here once you play a game and open up the BIOS. And then in this folder, you can actually move them and then select them. For instance, on the tablet, I've got the memory card files on the external SD card. So once I created them, I just actually moved them by the file explorer and then selected them again from the external SD card. So let's click run game, let's click skip. Okay, searching games, then you can refresh it and select your location. Here we got it. It's just gonna automatically detect it. So here I've got a DualShock 3 6 axis version. Okay, you can see here is a DualShock 3. The original one came with my PS3 Super Slim. I got here an ODG with micro USB male and USB female and also I've got here mini USB to USB because the Bluetooth controller can connect to your phone only if it is an Xperia device. So let's connect the mini USB port into the controller. Again for this you must have an OTG supported device. So. Um, Let's plug in the controller. If you got an Xperia device, the controller would work wirelessly by Bluetooth. You may find this option in the settings. So once we plug it in on the controller, you will see that the lights go on flashy. So what you need to do now is just press the home button and now you can see that it works. So let's select the game. Also, you have on-screen buttons with a D-pad, select start, right, one, right, two, left, one, left, two, and the classic X square triangle circle. If you press any button on the controller, it's going to get automatically detected. I'm going to uh, go ahead and save it because you can play it. And now these will hide out and then you can play. So this is it. Let's just click on start. And remember, on these PS1, you must actually save the game every time you finish a level or something, because if you exit, there is no autosave, which means only when you save it to the card, it's going to get saved, and you have to load the save. So yeah, let's play a little Crash Bandicoot over here. You can see it works perfectly, the original PlayStation 1 game, and as a fact, against any copies piracy for games because on the PS1 they were on a CD. Uh, the CD was not actually shiny and reflective on the back and it was black so when it was reading it, it was reading black. So this is it, thanks for watching, please don't forget to share this video if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you next time on How to IT.